Hey everyone, BC Richfield here from the Burb Nest. Today we're going to run through the BitGet Exchange, okay? BitGet, one of our new partners, have put on a fantastic trading competition with over $10,000 in prizes exclusively for the Nest Club. So I'm going to be entering this next week. The trading team are entering it, loads of the community as well. So we're super excited about it. So I wanted to go through their exchange, which I really, really like. So I'm going to cover the kind of core features of it, how you guys can use it, obviously with a bit of a focus on futures for the trading contest. So starting off, we're just here on the homepage. Okay, so I'm not going to run through with you how you need to go on. It's so, so simple to come and set on an account. All right, just go on BitGet dot com you click on it straight away it literally takes a couple of minutes all right you can get straight on there you can get access to futures spot and copy trading as well which is really really something of interest that i'm going to briefly cover with you guys today too so before i digress too much here's our home page one of the first things that i want to show you guys is the spot trading okay so here we go we just open that up we click on spot now this for me personally, and I know it's the same for a lot of other traders, this is what I'm using for my investments. This is when I want to buy Bitcoin or altcoins, hold it for a longer period of time or add it to my portfolio. I'm looking at the spot account. Okay. Now, what we can see on here with the spot account is you can go on there and you've got all your different time frames and bits and pieces that are available for your chart. And you've got all of your assets down here as well. OK, and as we can see, when you go on all, you've got a mixture of your USDT pairs as well as your Bitcoin pairs. All right. If you want to narrow that down, you can go just USDT, USDC, Bitcoin and ETH as well. OK, some other options underneath. So I'm going to focus on the USDT pairs. And let's say, for example, I want to buy some ETH. <clears throat> so I clicked on ETH down here. What we can see is it loads up our chart, which we can put on any time frame we want. If I'm looking to invest, I'm looking on a higher time frame. OK, so just for example, as we're looking on here, this is linked in with TradingView. You get all your favorite tools you can access as well. So you can mark these up properly. Now, let's say, just for example, we're looking to buy ETH. All right. For our spot portfolio, we can see here that on the daily, we're still struggling underneath some key moving averages and we can see price starting to pull back. So if I want to buy and I'm adding this to my long term positions and I'm looking for prices lower down, I'm saying, OK, well, where am I interested? All right. Now, I might be interested around here and say, OK, well, if we start breaking down below these lows, maybe I'll add a little bit into my position here. And again, maybe down at these lows here. I don't want to let myself get, you know, front run. If I've got a strong belief in my TA and my strategy that I think ETH is going to make a reversal at this point and start pushing higher, or considering in terms of spot investing, that I'm happy to buy at these levels and keep buying little bits on the way down, okay, which is averaging in to my overall position. So we've got our key levels in mind. And we're saying, OK, I don't want to jump in and buy some now. I think this is going to push lower. My first target are going to be these lows down here. So we see that's at, that's at 1347.93. Let's call it 1348. So as simple as that, I can go on to here. Type in 1348. All right. And then I choose the amount that I want to buy here in ETH. And I can use this slider along the bottom here as well. OK, so use this slider and you can decide the percentage of what you have available in USDT that you want to put towards your ETH purchase. OK, so really super nice and clear. You can access all the tools on here, right, that you can on TradingView. You can access all the time frames that you need to really get into your analysis and you can mark up the charts as you would like to. You get a good look at the order book over here as well. So you can see the buyers and the sells coming in and you also get a link through to all of these assets. And look how many there are. Bearing in mind, this is just on the USDT pair. They really, really have got a lot of coverage, which is really good to see. So before we dive into the futures, I want to just talk very briefly about their copy trading platform. Now, this is really, really interesting. All right. So this is professional traders coming onto the platform here. All right. And they're basically offering for you to go along 
right? And copy their trading. So if you look on here, you can see you can search by followers, return on investment, the ranking of the person. And here you can see the return on investment. All right. Now, you can see the amount of followers that they've got and you can choose along here if you want to follow along. All you need to do is click through onto it. It will give you really nice, clear instructions how you can invest a little bit of your portfolio and then tag along on the trades of other professional traders. Obviously, like any form of investment, really make sure you do your research. OK, so look into this. But what I love about this is there's no hiding from these statistics. All right. So you can see the people. And also, if you've got your eyes on a really hot trader, these guys down here, for example, doing incredibly well. Yeah. 559 percent. OK, return on investment. We can see what they have under management here. This guy's 377,000 guy or girl. Apologies. And then we can see on here as well that they're full. So you might want to watch those people and find out if they become available. All right. But all of these other traders are available here as well. OK, and you can change the grid section on the screen so you can see a bit more information if you go onto this view. And again, you can choose who you want to follow. And then when you get on there, you're nice and clearly taken through all the instructions that you need to sign up. Again, please do your own research on this, guys. Make sure that you're comfortable. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. And this is, as always, completely up to you guys what you're doing with your money. I'm just showing you what my plans are as a trader and what I find really interesting about this platform. The other thing that you'll notice as well as we've been moving around this is how, how good the user experience is, right? Everything's really nice and clear. Nothing's hidden, all right? And that is very much the same for futures. So let's take a look at futures, all right? So you'll notice as you come down here, we've got USDTM futures, just simply means futures settled in USDT. So that's US dollar tether, what I particularly trade with. USDC is also available here. Coin futures as well, okay? Supporting BTC, ETH, XRP, USDC, as well as others. So you can see up here, you can trade with whichever one you want to use as your collateral. I use USDT. But what I'm going to show you now is on the demo account. This is a really great way, guys, to get in here, familiarize yourself with the exchange, all right, without actually putting your capital up for risk. So it will give you a starting budget here. Yeah, normally around about $3,000. And what we can see here is the chart that I marked up earlier. Now, we can see that this has already played out, but that's not a problem. I'm just going to clear this up. <clears throat> Excuse me. The point was that we were saying to ourselves, OK, if we're going to run these highs up here, we could be looking for longer. But if we get this break down below this level here, then we'd consider short trades. Now, this is on a very, very small time frame. All right. So let's clear this up and look at something on a slightly higher time frame. So let me cover the different parts with you here. All right. So what we can do is this arrow here as you drop that down. Now, when you're in your real trading account, you will see all of the assets list. It's a sea of assets that you can trade. OK, here we get the choice of three because it's just a demo account. All right. So we've got BTC, ETH and EOS. You notice the S, OK, before the name and then the S before USDT. This lets you know that you're in the demo trading account. OK, so we're going to click on BTC for this one. And when we want to choose our time frame, we can obviously minimize that afterwards as well, especially when you're on the real one, because you will really see a lot of assets to trade. So you can also click on this here. Yeah, and you can type in or you'll have a list of full assets on the actual trading platform. So what else are we interested in here? Well, time frame. All right. Again, we've got full access to the trading view charts here. So we can use all of our tools from Fibonacci to markings to lines. All right. So we're looking for some TA on the chart. So I've got one, three and five minutes immediately visible here. But if I click down on the arrow here, we can see that you get a list of other selections. You can go on hourly, bring up the hourly. So let's go on to a one hour chart. All right, we can see Bitcoin at the moment currently pulling back. So where would we want to be aware of? We can see we've got the RSI loaded up here as well. And we're showing that on the hourly, we're starting to get down towards oversold. So we might be thinking to ourselves, OK, if our TA, if our strategy lines up and we've done our high time frame, our top down analysis, and that's telling us that actually we believe we're going to get some kind of interaction around here. OK. 
And our plan is to see price come into here, come down. If we then reclaim it, all right, then we'd be looking at this level here to get involved. So you can draw out all of your TA exactly as you would do on your trading view charts. Okay. And obviously bearing in mind when we're on our trading view charts now, all of these charts for BitGet are available. So you're trading them exactly the same, which is so, so important for futures. So we've got our TA planned out. We're waiting to see a reaction here. Now I'm saying to myself, when price comes under here, this is where I'm getting interested, right? If we start to see a retest of this and pushing lower, maybe I'll consider some short scalps. But at the moment, what I want to see is price come down here, take the liquidity under these lows, come back, close above this high here, which led to the low, and then I'm looking to get involved. So how can I do that? So first of all, I want to come over to here, which is our trading panel. Now, the first thing I want to make you aware of is you've got a choice between isolated or cross margin. Now, there's really good descriptions on both of those when we're in here. But the lowdown on it is that the isolated margin means that the capital that is at risk is the capital that you've got in your trading account. In this demo account, for example, I've got $2,999.50. So if I was to not follow a risk management profile that I should be doing, yeah, and I was very blasé about it, and I let the trade run away from me, I haven't got risk management in place, I risk a liquidation. Should this happen, and that shouldn't happen, guys, you should be using good, solid risk management, all right, which is what we're going to go on to in a minute with stop losses. But if, for whatever reason, you didn't, and your account was to get liquidated, then it means that the liquidation is limited to the amount of money in this particular account, which is your futures account. If, however, you're on your cross account, that will take into account what you've got in your spot account, your investment account, and other money that you may have on the platform. So please be aware of that. I like to trade isolated margin. The next two things you've got here are your leverage. Now, they offer up to 125x leverage, which is incredible. However, I always recommend this. And again, guys, this is me. It's not you. But I personally don't like trading with anything more than 10x leverage. I want to protect my capital, right? I'm not in this to unnecessarily gamble. We're trying to find high probability trade setups, all right? And we're trying to grow our account slowly and surely. I personally don't risk more than 2% of my account on any trade. And I'm going to show you how you can apply that as well. So for example, here we can see the leverage. We can pull this up and down to whatever we want. I like keeping it on five as a basic. And then we just click confirm. And we do that for long and we do that also for short. So we can see here we've got two options, open and close. So we want to open a position. Now, I don't want you to get confused. We'll still be opening a position, right, if we're selling short. If we want to close out a position, it's a position that we've already got open that we want to reduce or that we want to sell back to the market. So we're focused right now on open. We can see here we've got limit, market, trailing stop and trigger stop. I'm going to focus on limit today for you guys as well. Market is very self-explanatory, all right? You choose when you want it to be executed for the amount, and when you click buy long or sell short, it executes at the amount that the current market price is, all right? You need to be aware when you're using that that you do open yourself up for the possibilities of slippage, meaning that you're going to get filled, you'll become part of this order book, and you'll get filled at the best available price, which might be slightly better, might be slightly worse, than what you're expecting, okay? If you want to get more precise, then we're going to look at limit, which we'll do in a second. But a trailing stop loss here, a trailing stop loss means that you enter the parameters known as the callback rate, which is a percentage, meaning that if our trade triggers here, yeah, we might click our trailing stop to click in above here, meaning that when price crosses this level here, a stop loss will start moving up along with our position at a preset percentage back from where the position is. The idea of this is if the price runs up, if you get a really sharp sudden drop, well, it's not going to come back to take your stop loss or hit your entry. You are going to stop yourself out through choice with a stop loss that's following up in increments behind the order. Now, the trigger, which I really, really like this for systems such as this, for example, where you want a trigger price and an execution price, right? So what that means is Let's say we want to get interested in this trade, as I just explained here. We want to see price push down. If price then comes and comes back above the high that took the low, if it comes up and takes this, then that will be the trigger price, right? 
So what that means is I want the trade to be active or activated when we cross that line. That doesn't mean we enter there, right? What it means is the trade becomes live there and our trigger price is set on this line. So when price goes above here, it triggers the trade, but doesn't enter until price comes back and hits the entry, which we have in our execution price, all right? Then when that executes, your trade is live and you've got your parameters in the trade as well. So take profit and stop loss. We can see this little button down here, but we're going to cover this panel in more detail right now as we look at limit orders. So for me, what I'd be doing is I'd be monitoring this trade. I'd have an alert set on this line. When price breaks above that alert, I want to open my charts, drop down onto a lower time frame, check the market structure and say, OK, if my theory is still the same, we've broken this level now. I'm then, when we're up here and we've closed up here, I'm then going to go and open myself a limit order on here and wait for price to pull back into that to trigger my limit order. So what do I do there? So let's say hypothetically price has played out and we've now broken above this level and price is hovering up here. I want to see price pull back to this level. So I know this level's at 21,208. So I go into here, 21,208, and that is my limit order. Then... I can choose the amount of Bitcoin I want to allocate to it, all right? Or you can go on to cost value or nominal value, meaning that you would be putting USDC or USDT amounts in this case up, which can make it easier sometimes for you to understand the amount of your account that's going in. However, what I love about this is when we're keeping it as this, right? As we're keeping it on here as quantity unit, which is in BTC, we can take this slider and this slider represents all of the money that we've got here in our futures account, right? So if we're opening this and we say to ourselves, remember, risk 2%. So 2% of the account here shows us that that is $60.83. All right. So now we've got the price that we want to enter. Yeah. We've got our risk adjusted. We know what we want to put in. So we're saying, okay, we're going to put 2% of our account in. Now, you obviously need to adjust an account for your risk, right? Because that's 2% of your account. It doesn't mean that that's what you're willing to lose. So without getting overly complex and working this all out, you can just use their really handy futures calculator. All you do is put in the information that you've got in here and it calculates everything for you, all right? So we're going to go long. We know we're in the futures account. We enter our leverage in here, which we're saying is five. All right, we've got our opening price, which is over here, 21,208. Our close price, right, which is where we're looking to exit the trade. So if we take a look at that price there and make a note of it and we say to ourselves, okay, where do we want to get out of this trade? Let's say we're targeting these highs over here, just for argument's sake, or certainly the last up candle before this move down, yeah? So let's say so that's 21, 21, 6, 9, 8. And we know what our entry price is, okay? And let's say we want our stop loss to be down under here, 21, 0, 5, 4. Now, we go on to our futures calculator, and this is going to do all the hard work for us. So we know we've got 5x leverage. We know our opening price is 21, 2, 0, 8. We know we want to close the trade out at 21,698. We want to look at what the current rate is as well. So we can see that up here, 21,180. And then the amount of Bitcoin that we want to put into the trade. So let's say, for example, we're going to go in with what's on here, which is 0 0.64. And then we can calculate that and it does all of the work for us, tells us what our margin needs to be, what we're setting up for profit and what our return on investment is. OK, so we also got close price and liquidation price here as well, which you can put the amount in, keeps those in, keeps that information for you. And then you just put the amount of equity in and it will tell you what your liquidation price is. You really, really shouldn't be messing with that, guys, or going anywhere near it. Closed price can be very handy as well, but the profit and loss calculator I would recommend using before you enter any trade to really get a good solid handle on what your risk is, okay? We want to be building this over time, okay? It's not about coming in using super high leverage and just going absolutely crazy, 
right fine that might be how you want to trade it's completely up to you because it's your capital but i would recommend like the majority of professional traders that you're building these positions slowly and surely over time with smaller amounts then when you build your account up all of a sudden that two percent represents a lot of money okay so back to here we've got our setup we know what we want to risk on here we've got two percent risk now we want to click our take profit and stop loss. So as we just discussed there, we know where we want to take profit on the account 21698. So 21698 goes in here and we know our stop loss is at 21054. So as we can see here, we can enter that trade with the idea of trading it to the upside. So let's imagine that this has played out and this is where we're looking to trigger a long order. All right. So I'm going to click buy long. And what I get here is a very handy little summary box. Let's me know is my open price, current price, the amount that I'm putting up, what my margin is. And it even gives me the liquidation price here. We can see we're trading well within our, well within our means. We've got a liquidation price down here around 17,000. Okay. So once I confirm that my trade is live. Yeah. And we can see that here. So we can see the take profit that's up here. This can be moved and altered. We can see our entry and we can also see down here. Now what we're going to pay attention to is down here. All right, we can see our position, our margin ratio, open order, close amount, open price, all the information that we need to know. We know our return on investment here is currently at 0.08%. All right, so we're a little bit in profit. Obviously, that's not the point of this trade, guys. Always good to be in profit, even a marginal amount like that. However, the point of this is to show you how we can then execute and change things on here. So another thing that I absolutely love about this is how easy and fluid it is to change the position. You can change your take profit here. You can uh, change your stop loss here. You can even adjust the trailing stop loss here as well. And the other thing I really like is when we're looking to close the position, if for whatever reason we're really, really, the trade's really, really going well, or we get a very quick reversal just before our take profit and we want to exit the market for whatever reason, or we want to cut a trade early, then what we would do is we would go here to flash close, all right? And it gives you all the information in here, but a summary of that, all right, is that basically it is just going to auto trigger the order to close, yeah? And then it's basically a forced closing price. Now, the other thing here that's really interesting, we've got this reversal button, okay? So from here, we can click reversal, and then the position is going to be closed at market price, all right? So remember that. But then it's going to be opened in the reverse for the same amount of capital that you put up, all right? So it's going to flip reverse it for you, okay? Now, that could be particularly interesting if you've got uh, a theory with your technical analysis whereby you're looking for a specific level. You've maybe got to that level. You can take profit on your current position and book that in and flip short if you're seeing the rejection. That's a quite a nice way to be fluid with the markets. But do remember that is in market close all right so you are going to have potential for slippage but you're just going to get the market's best available price now the next thing that i really like down here is this so our close price so we can just go through this we can say to ourselves actually you know what this trade's going against us here now um all of a sudden new information's come to light maybe a news event has been released and we're going to say to ourselves you know what we want to de-risk this position actually because we think it might trigger the stop loss before we reassess however we don't know if that's going to happen and we've still got some belief or it might be running away from you or you might be nicely in profit and think, you know what, I actually want to take a bit off the table here. Well, you can choose what your close price is and you can choose the close amount. All right. And you can just take some of that. You can also adjust your take profit here. And as I said before, your stop loss as well. So as we can see here, everything's really nice and clear. I like the fact and I do really like exchanges that give you these really clear outlines on the chart. All right. Because, you know, these as well are going to be really, really important for monitoring this as it continues to play out. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial, guys. If you've got any questions, do come and find me around the nest. I'd be more than happy to answer. And this is going to be live next week, guys. I'm super, super, super excited about the trading competition that we've got on here with our partners at BitGet. So do come and hit us up in the nest. You can get a free trial. I'm sure there'll be a link available in the description below. So come along and trade with us. You can even 
use the MBS system on this, which is Pedro's brilliant system been built specifically for the Nest, which is an algorithmic based trading system. All right. So little tip here, maybe a bit of a sneaky one. But if you're thinking about getting into this, remember, BitGet are putting up $10,000 in prizes, right? You only need to open an account with $250 in it. You don't need to risk all of that. You've got prizes based on your P&L number of returns. So you've got multiple opportunities to win this. You don't need a huge account. So you can go in there and I promise you, you will really, really love using this, right? And for a lot of people who I've introduced to this, they've actually turned around and are now using this as their main trading account. But those people are very much going to be involved in this trading contest along with myself. I'm going to be in that next week. So let's look at some live trade examples. Now, we just got off doing a live stream with our partners, BitGet. And it's really, really handy, actually, because this was one of the AVAX trade setups that we were looking at. So at the moment, we've got the live screen on and we can see how the trade has played out. So the first thing I'm going to do is just run you through the trade, how it's played out. And then I'm going to take you back to the screen grab that we took while we were live, saying exactly what it was that we wanted to look for in terms of our entry. Then I'm going to give you a, just a really brief uh, rundown on what I'm looking to do to enter these trades and take advantage of the BitGet competition. You've got to remember, guys, it's only a $250 minimum entry, right? That doesn't mean that you're risking all of that. With good risk management, you shouldn't be risking lots of that. But there are several $2,000 prizes, right? So I'm going to show you exactly what I would be doing to try and take advantage of that, all right? And we're going to start here on AVAX. So as you can see, I'm on a one-minute chart. So for competitions like this, especially, I like trading low time frames, right? It means that we can get some good risk to reward, and it also gives us the option of multiple daily entries. So as we can see here, we just very simply had our liquidity marked out on a higher time frame, and I'll run through all of this with you on this stream as we look at some other trades. We can see we get the first liquidity run here, second liquidity run up here. Now, we're particularly interested in this one. We can see the thin red line that's leading across the top, which is the high from the first liquidity run, right? So we don't want to trade the first one, or I don't want to trade the first one for this system. I'm looking for the second one. Then it's very, very simple. I'm then looking for the low that took the high, all right? We then need to see a close below this low, which we don't get here, but we do get here. Then the trade becomes active on this very next candle, all right? And we can see we would have also got the trade come back into our zone over here as well, all right? So a quick scalp trade. We've been conservative here, which is always, in my opinion, the best thing to do because if you try and get too tight with these low time frame trades, especially you can find yourself getting wicked out. So we've taken our medicine, gone for the major swing high, micro obviously because it's down on a minute, but it is the swing. And then we've not taken that. We've dropped down nicely into our target. And how did we ascertain that target? Well, we see the untested lows down here. We take the down candles before that move up and that becomes our target. We can see price went down through that a little bit, but it's now started to get back on top, find support and push a little bit higher, all right? So before we move on and look for some other opportunities and show you some other trades that I'm considering and other trades that have been taken, then I just wanna show you this. So you can see the screen share there, which is live, so now, I'm just going to share with you the screen grab that we took before we went into this. All right. So again, just talking this through, what we can see over here, we've got our high side liquidity here, which we marked with this line. We're waiting for that liquidity to get swept. All right. You can't see it on this chart, but I'll show you on others as well. We're also looking for confluence from our RSI here. We want to see that RSI up in overbought, all right, meaning that it's looking for a correction. Now, when we come back down, we sweep this liquidity. We come back down to here, this line, which we can see the dotted line from the live chart. That's the low that swept the high. Price has now come down. And as we can see, when we switch back to the live chart, <laughs> represented by this pretty unneat line down here to the downside. All right, as we switch back now to the live chart, I'm going to show you again, just in case you missed it. how this played out live. 
Okay, and we can see on here, nice and clear, we had our clean break, close below. Again, no entry here, no close, close below, and then we sold off. So these are the type of trades that we're looking for, guys. So let me move you on to the 15-minute chart very quickly. Now, for these type of trades, obviously, the way that I'm trading it, you need to be quite nimble. Yeah, that means that you need to be able to react fast because we're dealing with one-minute candles. And really, really make sure you go through the bit get walkthrough um, that we've just covered, right? Because one of the many things I love about this exchange is it's quick. It's very, very easy to use. The user experience is excellent. So for me, it means that when I see these opportunities arise, I can get straight onto the exchange, quickly get, grab the asset that I want, and then I can load it up. I can get my limit order preset and ready to go, knowing that then when we close below, all I have to do is click execute. Then I've got the amazing capability to set up the stops. I can set a trailing stop if I want to. All of the stuff that we went through on the exchange. And then as I'm looking to scale out, which I would do in this instance, for example, because we've hit the main target, I don't just have to market sell the whole order. I can take it out in parts, right? So I can close 50%, 60%, 80% here, whatever I want, in case we get a push down further. All right. So do remember that, guys, and do make sure you get your head around the video because it really doesn't take a lot of learnings. Very intuitive exchange, very easy to use. All right. Lots of liquidity on there as well, which is what we like. And especially when we're trading the lower time frames. So let's look at a couple of the other AVAX trades. All right. Clear a couple of these bits and pieces up. So what do these stand for? So how I'm looking to trade this is on here, I've got my RSI, I've also got an OBV. And what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for price, as we said, to get down into overbought or oversold. Yeah, that gives us our original entry. We can then look to compound that when we start running highs like we've done over here and here. Again, failing to really compress and progress, sorry, past this level which makes us believe that we could be seeing deeper pullbacks. But the start of these moves, before we move into any compounding or any trades beyond that, I like to see the RSI that we've got here. Yeah, so this is down heavily in oversold here. And it's simple. When we go into, into oversold, then when we drop down here and we start to correct back to the upside, that's when we mark and this is shown on this with an arrow, all right? So it's nice and clear for you guys. Then when we drop back again and start to go back up, we mark with another arrow. We do this every time that we're setting these new lows. Now, the same principle applies. Then when we're looking on the lower time frames, our execution time frame, we're looking in this instance for the pattern whereby we're coming into a level and we see price come down, sweep a low, we then want to see it close above the high, right? That swept the low. And then that becomes our entry on the pullback. Okay, so I hope that's nice and clear. Just to give you a little bit of context, all right, for how these trades are looking. So we've got our points of interest around here, all right? And then we can see here, we get these liquidity lines showing us where the highs have then been swept. And what you'll notice here is when we have these, it gives us a really good extra piece of confluence to say, okay, once they're swept, we come back above them. The market's almost certainly showing us a little bit of strength here. Or here, if we sweep the highs and close back below, we can see a little bit of weakness coming into the market. All right. So we can see we've got our potential entries here. So let's drop down onto a lower time frame and see what that looks like. So for that, we're going to go into replay mode. And let's start by looking at these two here. So what we're looking for here is exactly as we said, we've run the low, yeah, we've swept it. This is the high that ran that low. So we're now waiting for this high to be closed above, which we get, and then we're waiting for our secondary sweep. So we've got our low here. Price comes down, sweeps this low, then it closes above the high. Now remember, and this is where, <clears throat> excuse me, for this particular strategy, 
as I was saying, it's really, really key you're using an exchange like BitGet where you can get in and out. It's easy to use. It's quick, all right? Because this particular entry here, this candle closed here, this one-minute candle, I've already got my position set up on BitGet, right? Because I know that once we run this low, which we do here, I have then marked the high that's run the low. I then have a few minutes, two, three, everything's been entered, comes up. When it closes, all I need to do then is just click go on the position, all right? I've already got my stop loss set in, right? I've got my take profit. I know where I want the trade to go. And then I enter the trade, all right? So we would have here, close of that candle. We press play. We've got the prior swing, which is down here, which is our stop loss. All of this, guys, really, really simply can be programmed straight in to the exchange. So you don't have to worry about it. All you have to worry about is making sure you've got your strategy tied down, you've got your TA spot on, all right, and then the rest will be taken care of for you. So in terms of targets, this would be my first target here. We've got this naked high, all right, that's not been run yet. And I like taking some of the up candles how this gets pulled back into this area. All right. Oh, excuse us a second, guys. Just having a moment. What we can see really clearly, guys, is we've got our target, right? We've entered our trade. We've got a nice 2.26R to our first take profit. We can flip our stop loss to entry when we get here. And what we can see here clearly is this little point, this little pullback, this point of consolidation, which lines up with this high right? So it's why I like leaving something in the trade, all right? Because we can take our profit here. We've got a lovely 2.2R, but we can leave some in there, whether it's 50%, 30%, doesn't matter, even 20%. Sometimes if these really run, what we're searching for are targets higher up. So for example, this really big drop, the big impulse move to the downside, you can target the up candle, that led to that move down, and that becomes our extended target here. And this is what I'm talking about when it comes to the BitGet competition, is I want to see good risk to reward for the trades. You know, we've got a limited time, we want to be trading our system, but at the same time, we really, really want to maximize it and get several opportunities a day. This is the absolute perfect way to do it. So we've got that trade there. Now, let's go back to our slightly higher time frame, even though in itself it is to a very low time frame, and let's look at a shorting opportunity for you as well all right so let's take this one here for example i'll just clear this up from the previous session now we're back on the 15 minute once again to remind you we've come up here into overbought we've come to overbought again here the important thing is we've run the liquidity from this first marker and this is telling us now that we're probably seeing a little bit of acceptance with this closing back underneath and ready to push lower so let me just move this back a little bit. The other thing that we've got on this one as well, and I typically look for this on the higher time frames like the hourly, but what you'll notice on the OBV and the same with the B Pro is we're looking for our divergences, guys. We want to piece together a story for ourselves, right? And we're saying, okay, what story are we trying to tell ourselves here? We're trying to say to ourselves, we're convincing ourselves of why we want to take the probability trades that we take. We want to take high probability trades, all right, that fit a proven strategy with proven method and proven triggers. And for me, as I've run through with you there, it's nice and simple. But if we can put this in as well, we've got a pivot here, a bearish pivot on our OBV. We know where our red arrow is. We get this beautiful 73% bearish divergence from BPRO, right? That's telling us this is the move that we want. And what else have we got? We've run our level, yeah, which is exactly what we're looking to happen. And we've also got our RSI, as we previously discussed, up in overbought. So that's perfect, right? That's all the confluence we're looking for there. We can see a similar situation down here where we can see we've got our level. Price has run that level. We get our pivot here. We've had a green pivot here as well. So we're starting to stack them. And then we get an 82% bearish, bullish divergence, sorry, 
on B Pro. Perfect. And look at this lovely move we get to the upside. And this is the one we're interested in on the downside. So let me just pop that off for a second because we're about to move to a lower time frame. And let's move to the one minute and see how this would look. So we've seen our run on liquidity. Price comes up. We want to see where the low is that swept the high, which is here. That's the sweep. Price comes, closes underneath, which becomes the breaker line. However, remembering that we're waiting for the second confirmation. So we're looking for the next run of the highs, which we get here. Now we want to see where's the low in here. Let me zoom in a bit for you guys so you can see this nice and clearly. Where's the low that led to the run of that high? And we can see it right here. This then becomes our breaker line. So as soon as we run this high here, yeah, we're interested. So we know where the low is. We know it's on this line, in this case at 20.239. So we're straight onto BitGet, straight onto the exchange. We enter, we set the trade up, we set our stop loss. We know our stop loss is going above this swing high here. All right, we know where our entry price is. And now we're looking left over here and we're saying to ourselves, okay, here's the naked low. Look at the up candle before that. That becomes target number one. All right, that's when we're taking some off the trade and moving our stops to entry. And then we can start looking left here to any point of key consolidation, or especially any area like this, where we've had these highs, we've broken above them, and we can quite clearly see here that we've run up, retested these highs before moving on further. So if we were to pop a line across here as well, we could say if we're looking for an extended target, that doesn't look like a bad option to me. All right. So the key is, that as soon as we run this high, we then get one, two, three, four minutes then before that's run. We've got all that time. It literally takes seconds, guys. Go onto your BitGet account. You've already set up. You've got everything on there. You've got your funds. You're on the right asset. And all you have to do is just put that information in. It literally take you a few seconds, definitely no more than a minute. And you don't necessarily, you won't necessarily be using this system, right? If you've got any questions about it, do come and grab me at the nest. I'd be more than happy to run through it with you. We've also got the live information out as well. But whatever system it is you're trading, just make sure that you're part of this BitGet competition, all right? It's going to be really, really fun. And it's something I've been looking forward to. I know I've been going on about it for, uh, for a while with all of our members. But it's just a really, really great opportunity for people to get in, experience some competition pressure. And it's just a good bit of fun working with other traders, like-minded traders, really, really good. It's getting some great conversations kicking about the nest as well. And BitGet have been absolutely fantastic putting this on for us. So we're here. We break here. Yeah. We zoom in for you so you can see that. We close below. Remember, that's really important. We trigger the limit order on the next move through, or you would grab it on this one down anyway after you've activated it. And then we know exactly what we're looking for. There's our entry. Our stop loss is going above the prior swing, which is here. Remember what we said, we're looking left. We're looking for that last down candle before the move higher. For me, I want to make sure that I've got at least a one to one there, ideally a little bit more, you know, in terms of risk to reward. But then we can see where our extended target is below. But once we get <clears throat> to target one, we can move our stops to entry. We come very, very close to getting stopped out here, as you can see, but we don't. We draw that across there comes close, but then it goes down further. And at that point, you can start to skim some off the trade or you've got some profit taken already. Your stop loss is now at entry. You've got a fantastic opportunity of getting a higher R to R trade. And then from there, you can see it play out. You can get your stops back up in profit in here. Wait for it to see if it pushes lower. And there we go. All right. So we've come back in. We haven't taken the stop losses here. We haven't taken them there. 
Price has pushed down and it's kept going even further, right? So we get to target to 4.26R. We can, again, take some money off the trade, but why not leave in 10%, you know, 20% just to see if you do get that big drop lower. And we can see here, we've got some low side targets over here now. And we can say to ourselves, okay, maybe that move before the move up or this move down here, which will mark the down candles before price moves higher. We can move this one down now to say the down candles before this move higher. And we can see we've run through that and we've come and we've tagged that second target really nicely. If you'd taken your time, you'd held out on that. That's roughly going to be a 7.2 R trade. Even if you have 10 or 20% left in the trade at that point, right? You've got to remember maximizing profits is key all right capital preservation is also key so you don't need to be too risky but by managing your trade in this way and using an exchange like bitget where you can take little bits of profit as you're moving through the trade all right so you don't have to just get rid of it because imagine if you just had to market execute or even a limit order that sold off all of your position at target one let's not forget our target one was here all right still a nice trade we got a couple of r or one and a half r out of it but you're rejecting your chance to get all of this movement to the downside. Now, with competition standards as well, what I like to do is take, a, take an amount out of my regular trading account and then put it aside so that I'm just using that amount for the competition. Because if I want to chase riskier trades or setups, it's totally your prerogative, right? You can do that. But remember, Always remember good risk management, guys. All right. And as you can see on the BitGate Exchange, you can put your stop loss in. You can put a trailing stop loss on if you want to as well. If you're not getting chance to manage the trade, have it set a few percent behind the trade. And then that way, you're not risking those kind of reversals because we all have different amounts of times that we can trade. As professional traders, we can be at the charts as much as we want, but people have jobs, lives outside of that. So make sure you're employing good risk management do come and get involved with us, guys. Information is below. Do come stop by the nest or come and grab me on Twitter, and then we can discuss it. And I really, really hope to see some of you there.